So last month, President Trump met with Nancy Pelosi in the House, Chuck Schumer in the Senate, and apparently negotiated a deal to provide amnesty for DACA beneficiaries with a few concessions in return. Now, all of that has changed all of a sudden. The administration has now put forward a 70-point immigration plan, which calls for easier deportations of people here illegally, a border wall, or a partial border wall anyway, and new limits on chain migration, which is the idea that once you get here, all of your relatives can come. Those are all preconditions for any future amnesty of DACA beneficiaries. Could this be the beginning of real immigration reform? Ethan Behrman hosts a radio program in L.A. He thinks a lot about this, and he joins us. Now, Ethan, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks, Tucker. So I guess I would just make two points, and the first is the most obvious one, which is Trump ran on all this stuff. So it's not like, A, it's a surprise, or B, it hasn't already been ratified by voters. I mean, government's legitimacy comes from voters. Voters hear about something, they get to decide yay or nay. They, we've had an election about this. So for Trump to say, I want a wall, well, gee whiz, you know, he said it like a thousand times during the campaign. I'm not really sure why the Congress has the moral authority to deny something that voters want or said they wanted. See? Oh, but the legislative branch is also elected by the voters. Mm -hmm. And the way our government is set up with the three branches, the legislative branch, by the way, the Constitution says that's where the bills start. Taxing and spending clause right. comes from Congress. So they're the ones who are responsible for it. And they're responsible to their voters, not on a national scale. But, I mean, they act like, I can't believe a wall. It's so big. Well, here's what Congressman Luis Gutierrez, who, who actually is kind of an extremist, and I don't use that term very often, but I think he qualifies. Here's what he said about these 70 points, all of which you've heard before. But you haven't heard him say this. What, I think we have a graphic of this. He said, it's an extension of the white supremacist agenda. What they want to do is criminalize and delegitimize Latinos. Now, you can agree or disagree with some of the details, but there's nothing explicitly racial in these 70 points. They apply to people from any country on the globe of a variety of hues. To say something like that whips people into a frenzy of race hatred. Like, can you agree that rhetoric like that is out of bounds? Well, that is a little beyond what I would say about the wall and the immigration plan and principles put forth by the White House. I would not go that far with it. But let's be honest, the vast majority of people who are here without proper documentation uh, speak other languages, have darker skin. Um, so there would be an undue uh, burden on people of darker skin. The, the, so, but I'm not saying it's white supremacy at all. That went too far. But let's let's get into some of the details, though, Tucker. Well, I mean, we're talking about question? heading it's toward an undue, a deportation It's an force. undue burden on people who are here illegally. The missing ingredient in this recipe, and I keep thinking this, is what about Americans who are already here, a lot of whom are recent immigrants of different hues, by the way, members of minority groups <laughs> making disproportionately less? They're more affected by this than I am, for example. What about them? I never hear anyone on the left mention American citizens and whether any of this is good or bad for them, ever. I never hear that. Why? Well, we do know that it overall can be very good, especially here in California. We have entire industries dependent on some of these workers that would be impacted. That's why when we talk about implementing E-Verify, we have to have functioning work visa programs in place to not destroy the agriculture industry. For example, Tucker, if you like to eat lettuce, that's coming from California. That's coming from Monterey County. We need workers to pick the lettuce. We need workers to pick the strawberries. Americans aren't doing that job. It is actually oh. undocumented workers. So let's get a work visa program well, so I in wonder, place I wonder why. so they can do I mean, those jobs. If you were to say, look, you know, I make sweatshirts and I do so in a sweatshop in Indonesia using 11-year-olds who are chained to their sewing machines. And if you knock out child labor, I may have to pay six bucks extra for a sweatshirt, so we can't have that. When did liberals start defending the exploitation of cheap labor? I don't know. When did that happen? No, I, I want to get... I, well, I, I don't. What I do is I say I want people out of the shadows so they're not abused and they're not subjugated by unscrupulous people who take advantage of them while they're here working. By the way, one of the advantages uh, of a long-term change here with increased minimum wages is you're going to see Silicon Valley fill that void. John Deere just bought a huge com a huge deal. It was over $300 million to buy a company that makes the lettuce bot to automate some of that. So there are long-term trends that are happening here as well. But why, are, why do we want to be as mean as possible. I find that to wait, be wait, not can, very can American question, though, to say, if, let's round wait, people mean, up. I mean, I get, look, I like immigrants, and for the 50th time, I actually really do. I grew up in California. I like them. I think they're hardworking and nice people. Yep. But I think our primary responsibility is to Americans. But I wonder, as a macro question, if we're automating a lot of these jobs, and you just said we're going to, 
Why do we need 1.1 million legal low-skilled workers every year and an unknown but high number of illegal ones? What's the point? What are they going to do exactly? If, if jobs are going away, why are we importing all these people? Has anyone ever stopped to ask that question? Well, actually, I mean, so net uh, illegal immigration has been flat for a period of time. Actually, it's been going down under President Trump with his rhetoric. So I think long term, we do have solutions here. Let, let us implement E-Verify. Let's get work, worker visa programs in place. Let's deal with the dreamers appropriately. And I think long term, you're absolutely right. There are long term solutions. To this. But short term, why do we have to be anti-American and round people up? That is reminiscent oh, of a period about, of uh, European I mean, history look, that is very unpleasant. You know the truth. There's no economic justification for mass low wage immigration. There's none. Nobody even tries to defend it. It's about votes. But given the jobs are going away, why would you shut this down right now? It's hurting Americans. It's lowering their wages. Why well, are we going along with this? The, well, the evidence is not showing that it is hurting Americans' wages. There have been studies showing that it, that's not the net effect of what is happening with undocumented workers in this country in the first place. But I agree with you. I think we need to look at it at a broad scale. But we can do it without immediately negatively impacting not just 11 million people, but the communities right. around them, our neighbors, our friends. Ethan, thank you for coming on tonight. Appreciate it.